again in the most beautiful place in the world for me. This is the place where I find my inspiration and this is the perfect place to paint. And today I'm going to show you what you need to take with you, what kind of materials and paint to make your trip more pleasant and simple. Painting plain air can be a lot of fun, but you do need to get ready for it. Every time I'm going out with my kids to the lake or to nearest park or I'm traveling to the mountains, I'm always trying to take my paints with me. But as you can see, I'm traveling really light. Traveling light allows me to go on the long hike and find that perfect spot or maybe I'm not going to be going far and still be by my car, but at least I'm prepared. So let's go find a good spot for plein air. So having all your paints with you and brushes and easels is really important, but what you wear when you do plein air is also important. Right now it's overcast, so you have to be prepared to have a warm jacket on. Um, definitely not something bright that it's reflective, no neon colors. Um, it's helpful when you're wearing something black. A hat to protect you from the sun, rain, and anything else. I wouldn't recommend wearing sunglasses because it definitely distorts all your colors. And if it's a sunny day, don't forget your water and your sunscreen. Here I am in the beautiful Moline Lake in Jasper. Amazing spot to paint. Unfortunately, while I was driving, it's overcast, but an artist always can find a spot, an inspirational piece. And the way I see it, that mountain over there is just spectacular. And surprisingly, the lake, it's the end of May and it's still frozen, which can add some interesting, interesting uh, moments in my painting. So I think this spot will do. Usually I just grab a chair and <clears throat> set everything on the ground. I'm not fussy about it. So definitely apron is a must. You don't want to get dirty. A simple palette. Ideally, you want to have the gray one. Um, it's uh, protecting from any um, reflections, but that's all I have for now. I have all my paints. And after doing a bunch of research, I picked a small Gorilla box. I do have a bigger one, which is 9 by 12, but this one just works fine for my small studies. And it's about 6 by 8. I use usually panels, which are primed. And I do like to use um, some sort of background color that's the opposite of my major colors that I'm going to be painting. So this is going to be quite bright in the beginning. I have a couple of extra panels just in case. They're all different colors because you never know what inspiration you might get. So my best choice for traveling brushes, they're small Princeton brushes. They're extremely durable and also um, it's a combination of bristle and synthetic brushes that work really, really well. So this is pretty much my starting point and I do like to have a bunch of brushes and we'll just go over the colors that I picked for my mountain scenes. So here it is, my selection for plain air this time. Again, we have Gorilla Box, which is six by eight. And I have a primed panel, and I think I'm gonna use the red one because overall my scene is gonna be pretty on the cool side with all the grays. So I wanna really pick the contrast color. I do have my disposable palette. Definitely paper towels because it might get messy. I do have my selection of Princeton brushes, different sizes, and because I'm painting pretty small scale, I'm not picking really big brushes. I do like this tool. Um, it's a rubbery kind of uh, nice and bouncy, so I can scratch into my surface and create some really cool effects. And color selections this time. As you can see, there's a bunch of different brands and uh, I'm just trying to travel light, so smaller tubes uh, helping me uh, 
not to be you know my bag not to be really heavy as for the solvent i'm trying to use um, solvent free gel and um, it's pretty portable you can just squeeze it in and no mess and beautiful selection of colors so i do have my um, neutral colors i love the lilac color with a combination of portland gray deep it creates really beautiful um, colors for my mountain scenes horizon blue and royal blue um, i do like using warm white for my plein air sessions instead of titanium white it's much softer look then i do have my two yellows one is really warm and the other one is a little bit on the cooler side alizarin crimson um, pearl red and a couple of greens it's chrome green and beautiful radiant green color and of course chartreuse it doesn't mean that i'm going to use all of them uh, but at the same time it's it gives me a good opportunity to experiment so i'm all ready to start painting this beautiful mountain scene So I have finished my small study. It's about half an hour, maybe 40 minutes in. So I did run into the problem because I forgot my paints gray. What do you do in that point? Well, you improvise. So as you can see, I completely changed the color scheme of the painting. When you forget the color, it doesn't mean that it's a scratch. You just adjust. So I was using a lot of different colors and the most important thing is your contrast in the painting. And this has been still achieved, even though I'm missing my favorite paints gray. So there you go. We really hope you enjoyed my video and it will help you in your future plein air trips. If you enjoyed it, visit my YouTube channel, Jalisco Art, and don't forget to subscribe.